Good evening and welcome from the Rectory Garden on Wednesday. I think it's the first time since before Easter I've done a little piece to camera from the garden uh, and I spent most of my day cooped up inside poring over a computer screen and in Zoom meetings I thought I'd come out and get a breath of fresh air. Uh, thank you some of you for your very positive comments about videos recently. I'm glad some of you found yesterday's uh, very useful. Um, it's, it's a joy to do. Sometimes they're a bit more rambling than others. And as you know, I'm an enthusiast for celebrating marker points in the history of the Christian Church. And in the last few days, we've missed a few absolute whoppers, actually. Uh, around this time, it's St Augustine of Canterbury, who was the first Archbishop of Canterbury. He died in uh, 604. He was sent over here in 597 by Pope Gregory to re-evangelize uh, these isles. Uh, he was a timid guy and I think Gregory's preference was uh, for London to be the seat of this new church but anyway we got Canterbury. And then uh, on around this time in uh, 1564 we have the death of John Calvin, one of those great princes if that's the right word of the Reformation, somebody whose thoughts have been quite influential on my thinking and the degree to which his thinking was intertwined with those uh, political and theological movements after, well, around the time of Henry's split with Rome and that difficult period after Henry died when the young Edward was being uh, uh, guided by uh, the Protectorate. And, and I know that uh, the Lord Somerset was in touch with Calvin uh, about matters religious. And also around this time we have the anniversary of Philip Neri, uh, 1595 I think, who is the founder of the Oratorian Movement. Uh, the Oratorian Movement uh, from the word oratory or orare, the Latin to pray. It's a sort of parallel structure to the, para to the parish structure we have. So you have, if you like, the very early church, uh, but long before the split with, uh, the, with the East, which became known as the Orthodox Church, then you have this great mover in the Reformation, uh, which is part and parcel of the uh, theological fabric of the Church of England, and then you have a response to that Reformation, both in Europe and in England, in Philip Neri. Well, maybe, as I say often, we can have a look at these people at other time. But uh, thanks also to people that find these uh, chats helpful. Uh, somebody uh, from not too far away has very kindly uh, sent me a Batik uh, face mask, a beautiful work of art. Uh, either it's an invocation to, to say less or maybe to remind myself to look after myself while I'm out and about. Well, the message of today really as a result of these meetings and as a result of some very, very positive experiences over the last few days and weeks is that people are basically very good. We're all moving together in the same direction. And touched as I am by the responses of some people to uh, some recent funerals I've done, I would like to thank the families very much for their extreme generosity in supporting the work of the church just a few yards from where I'm speaking to you now. Um, it's just one of the accidents of the last six months that the fee structures for funeral services not taking place in church have changed so the PCC, the Parochial Church Council, no longer retains any portion of that fee and it seems churlish to add to um, a bill a relatively small uh, amounts that, uh, of cost that we gladly actually sort of incorporate even though it means we operate technically at a slight operational loss. Well apologies for the, the business terminology but thank you others for your extreme gratitude at what I know are very difficult times for you and your families. Uh, the meetings I've had today have been entirely to do with school governance and if there are any parents watching, uh, any young people watching and any of you that are interested I would want you to know that it's been extremely difficult for governing bodies particularly at All Saints where we're a voluntary aided school so there is much more that rests on the shoulders of the governing body uh, there is no one size fits all for schools and the variables no matter how large a school are almost infinite uh, there are we just simply have to do the best we can and be sure that we've done all that the government requires us to do by following the guidelines and i think more besides so i'd just like any of you to know that um, when uh, 
the schools are open for your children to return. They will be as safe as they can possibly be. We never deny people the reality of their perceptions. Uh, it's nice, of course, if those perceptions are evidence-based, and sometimes gut feelings are absolutely right. But I'd just like you to know that after hundreds and hundreds of pages of briefing documents, I believe the governing bodies of at least uh, the school that I'm involved with over the road, we're sure that what we've done is absolutely right and as safe as it can possibly be in these unparalleled times and circumstances. It also reminds me of the action of the Holy Spirit as this period of Ascension time begins to draw to a close and as we look for the birthday of the Church on Sunday, the Feast of Pentecost, which remembers that time when in the upper room in Jerusalem the Holy Spirit descends in gusts of wind and flames of fire, those flames of fire that are embodied now in the flame shapes of bishops' mitres. That's why bishops wear hats that are that shape. They are, we believe, those direct descendants of those first apostles, and they are filled with the fire and flame of the Holy Spirit, and it's why we look to our bishops for leadership. So I guess just a kind of reflection to camera rather than anything specific or concrete to say, uh, thank you very much for, for your prayers. I can assure you that there are many, many clergy like me working very hard sometimes trying to meet expectations of other people that we can only ever second guess and we get things right sometimes we get things wrong so perhaps something more structured later in the week and do look out for a little video to our school communities on friday so the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all evermore amen and have a good evening and a good night.